Hello, and thank you for watching. Today we're going to talk about how to read your first report card. Hopefully you have your report card in front of you and can follow along. This is what your report card looks like today. Across the top, you will see your name, student number, and other identifying information. Underneath, you will see a list of your courses and grades. We're going to look at this section more closely. You will see all of your Park Vista courses listed with the teacher's names. If you completed an FLVS course during the quarter, you may see that course listed here as well. If the class is currently in progress or you finished it before or after the quarter, you will not see it on this report card. If you are taking classes through dual enrollment, those courses will not appear on your report card. The grades will, however, be transferred to your transcript when we receive the final grade report in the school counseling office. Next to your teacher's names, you will see a column titled Q1 for quarter one grades. The following column is labeled Q1C for quarter one conduct. Conduct is on a scale of one to four, with four being behavior very constructive to learning. Below the course list, you will see a table with GPA and HPA. For this report card, the only numbers listed in this table are the first quarter GPA and HPA. This is the average of only your first quarter grades. This helps you to see the trend of your current quarter grades. However, it is not your cumulative GPA. When we are talking about high school graduation or college admission, we are referring to your cumulative GPA. The quarter GPA can help you see how you did this nine weeks, but other than that, you will largely ignore this box. Instead, you want to look at the large box below. There is a lot of important information found in this box. It tells you whether you are on track to earn the standard high school diploma. First, it lists the cumulative GPA. This is the grade point average that you want to use when thinking about high school graduation. This student has a cumulative GPA of 3.5526. Because this is above the graduation requirement of a 2.0, this student is on track. Below this, you will see your weighted GPA. This is the average that includes weighting for rigorous coursework, such as honors, AP, or ACE courses. Next is the total credits earned. Currently, this student has 19 credits. Roughly, you should earn seven credits for every year you are in high school. Keep in mind, you earn half a credit for each semester you complete. Therefore, you haven't earned any credits yet for this year. The next line is referring to the reading English language assessment that 10th graders take at the end of the year. If you have taken and passed the 10th grade reading test, you will see a Y for yes. If you did not pass the test or have not taken it yet, you will see an N for no. The math graduation requirement is the Algebra 1 EOC. This student has already taken and passed that test. The next line is the community service requirement. If you have completed the 20 hours of community service for graduation, this will be marked as yes. This is followed by the online course requirement. Students who have completed an entire course online will be marked as having met the requirement. If you still need to take a course online, you will see not met. Next to the graduation status box, you will see a breakdown of your absences for the first quarter. This tells you the number of calendar days that you were marked absent in each class. However, this number does not report attendance based on our block schedule. School district policy states that students who miss more than 10 days in a course must pass the semester exam in order to earn credit for that course. For this attendance total, block periods are counted as two absences. Here are some things to keep in mind. Most courses award semester credit. The first quarter grades you receive today will be averaged together with your second quarter grades and your first semester exam grades to calculate your semester grades. It is the semester grades that appear on your transcript and are averaged into your cumulative GPA. You will earn a second semester grade in June, which will be the average of your third quarter, fourth quarter, and second semester exam grades. Again, only the semester average will appear on your transcript. The only courses that do not award credit in semesters are those that have an end-of-course exam. 
We have four EOC courses, Algebra 1, Geometry, Biology, and U.S. History. For these courses, you will have one final whole credit grade appear on your transcript at the end of the year. This grade will be an average of all four nine weeks grades, your first semester exam, and your EOC score. So what if your first quarter grades are lower than you would like? Whether you are taking a course with two semester grades or one whole year grade, the good news is that you have time to bring them up before they are averaged into your cumulative GPA. These are all great suggestions for how to improve your grades. For example, make sure that you are doing your homework and then studying beyond your assignments. Keep track of your grades through SIS so that you can correct a problem before it's too late. We have a detailed flyer with all of these suggestions in the office or on our website. Thanks for watching. For updates from our office, you can get Remind text messages or follow us on Twitter. We post all of our school counseling presentations on our YouTube channel. You can follow Park Vista on Instagram. We also have lots of great resources available on the Park Vista website. Thanks again, Cobras.